Hey everybody, so welcome again to another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about some AI tools that you can use to assist you with research. Now this is not necessarily going to be a chat GPT video but other AI tools that are free on the web that you can use to assist you with your research um, and for those who don't know I'm just finished I just finished university I came from a computer science background this is not going to be tools that are isolated just to STEM so this can be used in any other other departments social sciences arts etc and you can use these tools to essentially get you through the initial hurdle of research which is the data collection collecting your sources or, or building your sources and again uh, this is pretty much up to you as a user to use it however you want and you don't necessarily have to be a student either maybe you're just researching something random that came across your mind or you saw online and you wanted to look into it some more maybe you can use this in those use cases it's pretty much up to you with how you want to use this so without further ado let's get right into it okay so this on the screen that you're going to see is a prompt that I'm going to be using to basically show you these different platforms and how they operate. So first off, let's start with ChatGPT, which is something that everyone knows. And we'll see how ChatGPT goes when asked these questions. So the context that I'm working with here is I'm remembering this one course that I was in from actually my last course, actually. It was about the history of oil and I just wanted to see like what is it that chat GPT would give me towards that and so so this is something that everyone knows about so we'll see what chat GPT can do this is the chat GPT 3.5 version this is the free version that is available for everyone to use and we'll see so they give some interesting information back but the key thing here is how do you know that this is actually true where is the citation from where is the information from right now maybe in the chat gpt 3.4 versions but this will require you to basically pay for a higher version of this and but for the chat gpt 3.5 this is not necessarily available you just have to assume that all of this is correct it sounds right based on my understanding of it so allied blockade oil embargo yes strategic resources Yes, um, these do sound okay, but then you can't just use ChatGPT as a source when you're conducting research. So that takes us to our first AI platform that we'll be showing. Okay, so on the screen here, we have Perplexity, and the website here is called perplexity.ai. And it starts off the same as most of these text-based AI interfaces, you pretty much ask a question and then by asking a question, they'll generate some answers. So let's go about asking the exact same question. So let's assume that I'm in my history of oil class where I'm studying oil and I'm looking for sources to basically write a paper. By the way, this course was a very um, essay heavy course. So we'll see where it goes from here. So I'll ask the exact same question. see and um just for context i did i had already asked this question but as you see it gives us an answer and it tells us it generates a response for us similar to what chat gpt did but it does it slightly differently so you see these numbers associated here if i were to click on these numbers these are actually the links to where the AI built its response from. If you wanna see all the sources, you can click this particular button here and then you can see like all the sources. So uh, the first source that they used to generate the response from came from this uh, website here. So let's see what this is. So this is, this is one of the sources that they used. Uh, they have out uh, here Russia oil and Hitler's needs. You have other options such as rewriting. So if you want them to generate you a new response, you can use the different models. So Claude dash two point one. This is the model that uh, from Anthropic. 
again, again, the, the beauty about a lot of this is that you can just experiment. So if you want to use a chat GPT-4 model, which is from OpenAI, which was uh, paid for, this is a lot powerful, but this is also under pro version, which you're going to have to pay for. But at the very least, you have the free version that you can use. Uh, the other thing about perplexity that I also like is that you have related responses. So you can use these other related questions. So how did the allied powers obtain oil during World War II? This is based off of the original question that I asked. And again, they give you an answer. But in addition to the answer, they give you sources that you can then use to generate your uh, citations, or you can use these sources to do conduct further readings. So if essentially verify that information is valid or that it, fit, uh, it fits the needs that you particularly are looking for. Another cool feature that I also liked with this platform is they give you images as well as videos. So let's give us some time to run. You can have associated videos um, with the content that you actually search so that text that you search if you want to do more readings you can or if you want to watch more videos or if you want to use a particular video within your essay you can use these associated videos or associated images to add that to your paper when you're conducting your your final essay draft or that you're going to submit the other cool thing that these websites also have is that they have a co-pilot. So you can ask a follow-up question. So you can ask a follow-up question on the original question that you asked. So let's go with uh, So again, how impactful was the US and the war effort? And again, same concept as before, we can generate images, videos. And most importantly, we can see the sources that they got the information from. There's one more cool feature with perplexity, and this is also shared between a lot of these platforms as well, is the thing about perplexity that I particularly like is the ability to upload files. So when you upload these files, they could be text files, you can upload images, you can upload PDFs. Um, currently, I only have two left for the day, so this is on the free version. Um, again, so if you go to the Pro, you can of course, you can access more features. So what I'll do here is I'll upload a file. And I have these uh, text um, conversations. So I'll, I'll upload this, create a 30 nine day text, and I'll show you here on the screen what this is about. So this is a website and the text from the website that I copied. So the text, just for the sake of this um, presentation here, or YouTube video, actually, presentation. And in this, it's basically going over a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And this 30, 60, 90 day plan is essentially a checklist of things that you can do when you're running a new work job, you know, to basically get you up to date with the, the work that you're doing, you know, to make you feel more comfortable in there. So now we're going to ask questions not based on perplexity's general knowledge. We're going to ask questions based on this particular sample data that I gave it. So coming back here, you can see we have our question. We have the source, sources, which is actually that one that one source that we added, the, the particular file that I uploaded. And we get an answer based on that. So the so document used to outline goals and strategies for the first three months of a new job. Yes. Is particularly beneficial during the probationary period when an employee is being evaluated for permanent employment. Yes, uh, let's see where it goes. This is created using the SMART goal specific, specific, measurable, achievable, re relevant, and time sensitive. Yes, this is also content that is 
reference within the document. Yes, it's true. And the plan can be used to assign, assign a new position, a project, or preparing for a performance review. So yes, this is all really good. So, and I have some related questions. So let's see what are some goals to include in, let's see what this gives me. Streamline process. Yes, these goals can be further down to action items that can be used to study the company's mission statement, meet them with experienced staff and ID department regarding software, keeping notes regarding ways operations can be streamlined to be more. Yep. So again, we uploaded a file and that file was used that we can query to ask questions based on it. And what perplexity does that perplexity uses the information that we give it to essentially generate responses. Now I'm on the free version. I don't have the pro. I'm not sure if you can upload multiple sources at the same time and ask questions on them. So you can do somewhat of a meta analysis with this to pick apart the, the, the sources that you have and then generate your responses from it. So again, uh, feel free to play around with perplexity. It's pretty much all up to you as a user. The sky is the limit really. And with that, we'll switch over to our next AI platform. Okay. So here we go with another platform, SciSpace. Now SciSpace, I'm going to say this, does offer a bit more features in comparison to perplexity in regards to research, which is really cool. So let's get into it. And we'll start off with the exact same prompt, the exact same question. And we'll ask it here and let's see what SciSpace does for us. Now, the thing about SciSpace is that SciSpace is strictly built off of research papers. So within the sources that you see popping up here, you notice that a lot of them are journal articles. So open access journal articles. Uh, we can have the PDF actually, we can see, we'll get to that later, but let's see what the response that they gave us. So this is insight from the top five papers based on our search queries. So, during World War II, oil played a crucial role in the United States, including Germany, as a strategic importance. Yes, it was super fuel with France. The quandary German planners concluded that uh, control of oil resources from the Soviet Union and the Middle East was necessary to fuel the shortage. Yes, da, 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 da. petrol allied forces in motion, primary oil, a lot of cut supplies of exhaustion in Japanese petroleum stores. Yes, so. This all looks like, well, this is all things that I learned in, in that particular course. So, but this is good. But anyways, what if this is all just randomly generated? Let's look at some of the sources. German foreign, for, uh, German foreign policy towards the Romanian oil during 1938 to 1940. And we get a little insight of what this paper is actually talking about before we dive into actually reading it. Let's, it's open access, so maybe I can just get right into it. And also, for those of you who are wondering, uh, I used to work at a library uh, part-time as a student. So if you get some of these websites or some of these links and you can't really access them, using the title is a good start because you can actually use the title to get into some of these papers. So this link is not particularly working but the PDF is, so I can get access to the PDF this way. And we can see, so you know, this paper is talking about the German foreign policy towards Romanian oil. And of course we can get into this, we can read through this. Um, let's see. So this looks pretty good. Um, again, this is up to you as a reader, as a researcher, you can do further uh, investigation. Maybe you don't want this. That's, that's pretty much up to you. Um, from crisis to opportunity, this paper discusses German's oil strategy during World War II. It says that Germany aimed to be self-sufficient in oil, but realized, realized it needed to control oil resources from the Soviet Union and Middle East to fuel their oil shortages. We'll wait for that to load. The other thing that's really cool, and this is the same thing I was in perplexity, which is also here, is that they have this feature called Axe Copilot. So we can ask our co-pilot questions about this particular paper. 
So as you see, reference here is the actual paper that I had clicked. So let's ask a question. Not really sure, so let's 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 wing this. What were the damages done to the German tankers that the German fleet had lost? Okay, this is not a very good question to be honest with you. But let's just I don't know, let's just see. Give us okay, let's try that one. Okay, let's go with this. Of course my internet's not working. Okay, so their final conclusion. Okay, so so well, so this is basically me having a conversation with the chatbot about the particular paper. So no, Germany, Romania did not give oil to Germany. Germany developed a strategy to ensure control of Romania, although Romania also had its own strategy to counterbalance the Germans' efforts to ensure territorial security and integrity. Now, this is interesting. So if this is um, something that I would like to look more into, or let's say I have a particular theme that I'm trying to work within my paper, in regards to German Germany and their usage of oil within Europe, this is something that might be of some value. So asking the AI, the bot, questions about the paper before I actually read the paper and read all the information that's within it, that's extremely helpful. So that's really the value that can come from this. And Again, the way in which these systems are built, yeah, I like the fact that you have a feedback system. This is really important because if the if you as a reader check this information and that's not actually true, then SciSpace can basically readjust their models to work better. Let's go to citation generator. Now, I believe most most people have their own favorite citation generators. The only reason why I'm mentioning this is because it's built into SciSpace. So if I were to link some website, conduct a search, let's see what SciSpace gets back. I can generate an APA citation based on that so it finds what it is and it gives me the in-text citation for this as well. So this is a research, this is a, this URL is an economics uh, URL talking about from Ludd University and there we go, we got a citation. This is really nice because it's built into the system is so you can use this for APA, MLA, Vancouver. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This was also pretty cool. So this paraphrasing feature, I've never actually seen this before. It's pretty cool. So what this does is that you can give it some degree of text. And the text that you assign it, the text that you give it, you can use that text to essentially paraphrase it instead of taking, for example, one of the issues that you might have is you have a particular text and you don't want to use it word for word. You want to change it a little bit. So let's say I have that same document from before. So this is that 30, 60, 90 day uh, text that we had before. I'll use this and I'll paraphrase. And again, there's a lot of parameters that you can adjust so you can have it shortened the default value you can expand on it you can have different variations so medium changes less changes more changes for now we'll just keep it at the default and we'll paraphrase 
Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we got it small though, <laughs> but uh, I guess I reached my limit on this, so we'll we'll have to do this another day. But um, yeah. So with this system, you can basically pass in your text, and whatever you pass in, you can have that paraphrase to suit your particular needs. I guess the example I gave wasn't as good. I like this one. This one's also really cool. So I did this before. This input text that you see here, I'll actually copy one from chat GPT. Here we go. So if you know that this is the text that we had generated from chat GPT at the start of the video, And we'll see if it will detect that this is AI. So mostly AI, which is correct. So it is highlighting parts of the paper that were generated by AI. So it's not highlighting all of this, but again, the thing to bear in, bear in mind is that a lot of these AI checkers, they don't really tell you 100%, but they do give you some indication. So what I'll do is that I'll copy something that is not from AI that I got from a website. Hopefully this is not AI. Yeah, so this is really good. So I copied this from that same 30, 60, 90 day article and we got back 0% detection. The thing that's really nice about this is, again, there are other AI detection platforms outside of a size space that you can use. But the fact that it's built into size space makes it really easy. So Copilot, read with AI, again, this is the other feature which is similar to perplexity, where essentially you can pass in documents and these documents you pass in, you can have conversations with the AI about that particular document. So. I've done this before with the other platform, Perplexity, so there's not really much to show here. Again, this platform does have a Google extension, which is pretty cool. So you can have fun with that. And yeah, you can upload a PDF. So one of the things that I've noticed about size space in, in comparison to um, Perplexity is size space seems to emphasize a lot of PDF documents. So if you are working with a text file, a Word doc, I guess you should bear in mind that you should convert it to a PDF, so export as a PDF, and then you can work with it that way. Okay, so last but not least, we have Bing. Now, Bing recently wasn't the top dog in search engines, but with their AI integration within their search so they have their own chat feature built into their search system. They have really stepped up the game a lot. So one of the things that Bing offers, which Google, well, depending on where you are, for example, if you're in America, you can gain access to BARD, which is Google's counter to what Bing has done with their Bing chat. But for now, if you're in other countries, apart from uh, selected countries that Google was, uh, I guess, test having a test flight with this in, you can make use of Bing Chat. So Bing Chat will ask again the exact same prompt. And the thing about Bing Chat is that it's free. That's the first thing. And you can give more precise conversation. So again, so let's see what it does. So same question, again, I'm in class, I'm studying history of oil. So the context is all the same. And while Bing is generating a response, not only is it generating the response, it's also telling me where it got its, its sources from. So, and you can see these are the different sources. So one, two, three, four, Four, these are the four sources that it used to generate this response. So we're talking about environmental impact, we're talking about the strategic bombing campaigns. This comes from Wikipedia, historynewsnetwork.org. 
So if you're using Bing, which is through Edge, so you'd have to download Microsoft Edge and go to service with Bing, or I think you can, actually no, you can use Bing in Chrome, whatever. Just go on Bing, and while you're searching, you can actually just make use of the Bing chat feature, which is, again, it's built into the search system. So with one simple click, you can transition from these different modes. Now, I can't talk about Bing without talking about Google. So Google is actually coming up with their new Gemini uh, language, large language model. And Gemini is their answer to chat GPT. So it's not, I haven't played with it yet. I don't have my hands on it, or at least the, the final version, but they have done some demos, which they uh, published. And by the way, their, their demos, which they said themselves are more edited than your favorite uh, social media influencer timeline. So yes, they have their own product release, which is Gemini, and that's good. However, though, it's yet to be determined how much it stacks up against ChatGPT. Some are saying that it is way better. They have done some really interesting things in terms of the backend to build it up, but Google should have this feature that I just showed you with Bing built into their search system. If they actually do have it, it's they have Bard right now, but again, Bard is not necessarily accessible to a large number of people. You need to basically have like a VPN where you use your VPN and then you can access uh, the American network and then you can gain access to Bard. But apart from that, right now, Bing is the only one I can use, but we'll see in the future what Google has to offer. I bet my money that Google will come with something a little bit better, but yep. But in, the, in regards to research, these are the platforms that you can use to hopefully assist you and aid you with getting the information that you want. And hopefully this was of benefit to you and you learned something. Hopefully it was helpful and you can use this in some way, shape or form. On that note, Wish you all the best and take care.